Yo, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Comic Jabroni New Comic Book Day Pickups and Review video. Yesterday, I went over Marvel and DC, and today we're going to go over independent books. So wait around 10 seconds, and we're going to get right into it. All right, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. So guys, I changed it up this week a little bit. If you saw yesterday's video, which I'm going to post right there, you know that I already reviewed my DC and my Marvel pickups for the week. And today, we're going to go over the independence. If this is your first time watching one of Edwin the Comic Jabroni's videos, think about hitting that subscribe button, guys. If you're into comic books, if you're into video games, into Ninja Turtles and action figures, I got videos for all of you type of collectors out there. Just check them out. And remember that I still have my 700 subscriber giveaway contest going on. Guys, in that contest, I'm going to be giving away kind of like a Walking Dead bundle with the comic book added. We're going to be doing the Walking Dead Tac Decks. Uh, this is like a, a trading card, uh, power shifting battle cards. Really cool. Uh, what else do we got for you? We got the Walking Dead McFarlane action figure of Dwight. And I also have a Black Cat number one from Walmart, exclusive, still sealed. Man, there you go, three pack of comics. So remember, check that video out from last week. It's gonna tell you exactly how to enter the giveaway. And next week when I do my new comic book day pickups and review, I'm gonna be choosing a winner. But we're gonna let the randomizer choose. So let's get into it. So on Wednesday when I went by my local comic shop, I also picked up a baseball card, guys, that I have been looking for for a while now. Edwin the Comic Jabroni doesn't discriminate. I collect all sorts of stuff and we put it here in the man cave. So if you guys remember, uh, this copy or this issue of Aberrant, number two from season two, you'll kind of recognize that. That is the Billy Ripken homage. And that was a card that I've been looking for for a while and I was actually able to get it. What's special about this card? This came out in 1989. Billy Ripken is the brother of Cal Ripken Jr., the very famous Oriole shortstop. Well, Billy Ripken, when he took this picture, somebody on the bottom of his baseball bat had actually written something, and it is, uh, it's a bad word, guys. So, if you want to know more about it, go ahead and Google it. Throw it in your Google machine to find out, but I did finally get one of these in my collection. It's kind of a collectible card. I don't know. Let's get into the reviews. All right, first up from IDW, we got Usagi Yojimbo, number three, guys. Super excited to get this, and one of the biggest reasons I am, because now I can finally start reading the series. Perry Comics told me, hey man, you know, pick it up, but wait till you get to issue number three to actually read one, two, and three. It's gonna be a better read when you binge read it. So what I'm gonna do special for you guys out there in the YouTube land, is I'm going to read issues 1, 2, and 3, and I'm going to do a special review on those and let you know if it's worth buying or not. Next up from Image Comics, we've got Oblivion Song number 18. If you guys watched the video from last week on John's Comics with Kids show, Perry Comics and John Comics with Kids a-okayed me the trade of Oblivion Song chapter 1, right? This collects issues 1 through 6, and I fell in love with this series absolutely digging it so what did i do i went out and picked up issue seven eight and nine because that's what my lcs had and john actually has issue 10 that he's going to send me because the story was just phenomenal so what i did was i put it on my pull list so i got issue 18 i didn't read it but i want to start collecting them so when i finally get up to issue 18 19 20 i already have them i don't have to wait i can keep continue to read it i'm just waiting on that one from john issue number 10 and i'm going to continue on with the story but guys oblivion song one one through six and then seven eight nine what i've read fantastic all right guys from aftershock comics this book came out last week but there were so many books that came out that i put it in my pool box and I said guys I'll wait till next week to get it that's gonna be descendant number four guys this has conspiracy uh, conspiracy theory and thriller all in it there are senators and governors and these very high position people in government who have had their children abducted from them right and you have an FBI agent and a conspiracy theorist 
that are going out and trying to find out what is going on because there's these symbols that are showing up and they know that it is a cult that is out there grabbing these children. But what do they have in mind? What are they planning to do with these kids? And in issue number four, you actually get some of those questions answered. What is the cult doing? Why are they picking these kids in particular? And it's all because of this book that they have. So the FBI agent and the conspiracy theorists, they're trying to get their hands on that book. The cult's trying to get their hands on that book. They're also trying to abduct these kids and they're trying to resurrect something, something, somebody. Don't want to tell you who it is, but guys, Descendants been damn good. One, two, three, and four, I do recommend it. All right, next up, another image book. This is issue number five of Sharky the Bounty Hunter. So I feel like it's been like two or three months since I've read a Sharky book. I don't know if they took a hiatus after issue number four, but I do want to say, and this is part of the Mark Millar like universe, right? I do got to say, this is still a very funny book. Doesn't take itself too seriously. You still got Sharky out there with his little, uh, his little kid friend who's helping him out on these missions. And they're, they're trying to now rescue the woman. And I think her name was Amanda Deering or something like that. They're not trying to rescue her because they found out that the bounty placed on her was kind of a, like a false flag. They, you know, somebody who was actually the bad guy is trying to put all of the blame on her. So now Sharky is trying to rescue her and they're actually, they, they get to this huge like spaceship that is the size of a city and they're in some type of a Roman Colosseum and they're about to behead this woman when Sharky just jumps into it and tries to rescue her. Guys, ton of action, a lot of joking around. You actually get a call back in this issue to no issue number one. If you remember, Sharky was having relations with a woman who said that she was about to go through a procedure that was gonna turn her into a truck, right? So this woman comes back in this issue and she is for sure a damn truck. And he's like, holy smokes, you actually went through with it. And uh, she actually helps him out. It, it's hilarious. It's funny, guys. Sharky, they're talking about making this into a Netflix series. And this is one of the reasons that I actually stopped reading Space Bandits after issue number one. Because Space Bandits was just going to be a one through five, like a mini series. And I believe Sharky is going to be an ongoing. At least I hope so. Because it's funny. It's well worth the read, guys. All right. From Ahoy Comics. I remember picking up issue number one. It was the last one that my LCS had. Perry was talking it up when we were talking about Buyer Pass. And I, I, you know, I saw issue number one, picked it up, laughed my butt off while I was reading it. And I had to grab issue number two, Second Coming. Now, this was funny. Not as funny as issue number one. I think issue number one really, man, out of the park, knocked it out, hilarious. There are funny parts in this, but now this is getting more into that kind of like Jesus is coming through to this uh, Superman kind of wannabe, right? He's he's trying to teach him his teach him ways of not going about doing things the way he feels like he should do them, right? Have compassion for people because in this issue, um, Lois Lane or this guy's like girlfriend who is a journalist, right? Just like Lois Lane. She's getting bugged by this guy, right? A stalker keeps coming to her job. So Superman finds out who it is, finds his address, goes to the house, picks him up. He's like, if you ever go back to my girlfriend's job and blah, 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 come back here and blah, 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 blah. Well, what happens? Lois Lane, I'm going to call her Lois Lane because that's just what it, it, it reminds me of, right? So Lois comes back to the house and she goes, yeah, that stalker came back again. So she goes to bed and an old Superman, fake Superman here, flies off to that guy's house and totally wrecks the dude's house, right? Come to find out, this Superman guy was going to the wrong guy's house the whole time. And Jesus is like, see, I told you there was a better way to do these things. And uh, there's another funny part here where God actually comes down to earth and takes Superman and he's like, I've been watching what's going on and this isn't what I wanted you to do. I wanted you to teach Jesus how to be a better, how to be a bigger man and how to be a superhero and blah, blah, blah. So he takes him up to heaven and they're actually going through the food court of heaven. And it's all these different restaurants that have that are now extinct, right? You got like a Kenny Rogers chicken place and it shows like the, the years that it was open from it. It's just a callback, pretty funny stuff, guys. Second Coming is, it's quite hilarious. In, in all honesty, it's, it's a funny book 
and I'm gonna give it another chance. I'm gonna go probably for issue three and issue four just to see where they're gonna go on with it, guys. Second coming. All right, a book that uh, wasn't sure if I was gonna grab, in all honesty, but I saw it there at the store, and I kind of looked through the artwork, and it and it really it really hit me. I was like, man, this this looks pretty good. Except I didn't I didn't go through the book far enough because I probably wouldn't have picked it up if I saw this last part. But it's gonna be the White Trees from Image Comics. This is book one of two, right? Uh, it's from Chip Zdarsky, so if you're reading Daredevil, you're gonna know that's the same guy that's writing Daredevil. And right here on the cover, you get kind of like the three protagonists of the story. They're older heroes that used that fought in a battle long, long ago. That battle finished. Now they're trying to just live their lives, and you find out that their kids have been abducted. Right, the daughter, the the daughter of both of these, uh, both these guys. This is definitely for mature readers, I gotta say, because probably about the last four pages, there is some sexuality going on that is way above and beyond what I think even Faithless is getting into. It's like, damn, this is some crazy stuff. The story's pretty cool, though. I'm, I'm digging this, bringing these older heroes back, you know, saying, hey, your kids are abducted. We, you know, as the king, I can go out and I can try to find them, but it's probably going to be faster for you guys to go and find them. So they kind of have to talk this guy into doing it. He shows up the next morning, ready to ride out. I'm going to pick up issue number two, guys, but just beware if you do pick this up. Um, a lot of sexuality. Uh, that's all I really want to say, man. It's 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 crazy. It is definitely crazy. I know uh, somebody out there. I think Jeff uh, Jeffrey Comic Han. He was like, yeah, it's it's way above and beyond. It is it's pretty insane, guys. You you do see a lot of the male anatomy. There you go. That's what I'll say. A lot of the male anatomy. Okay. So, anyways, but it's it's a good story. I do have to say that. So if you're not if you're not disgusted by by seeing artwork of a male body, definitely pick this up. I think it's a great story, and I can't wait to see what they do with issue number two, the White Trees. All right. Next up, another image book. This is issue number two of Reaver. So, I really like this cover, right? That's a that's a pretty dope cover with the, the gold, with the blonde. The guy has the blonde hair. Um, I read issue number one because Rod the Rican sent it to me in an A-OK. -okay. Thank you again, Rod. I read it. Absolutely enjoyed what I read. Gave me that feeling of the Suicide Squad meets Game of Thrones. But then you get to the back of the book and the writer, who I believe it is Justin Jordan, the writer talks about that he had inspiration from Arnold Schwarzenegger's Conan and that world that Conan was in that movie that's kind of what you're getting here where magic it's there but not everybody uses it and then when you use it it takes away from you right and then when you read through this right you have this suicide squad of protagonists that have to get to another part of the world to try to, to, to kill somebody um, but when you read through this, Justin Jordan gives you even more about where his inspiration is, right? Because he talks about how in medieval times we think of like old England, right? It's 1500s, 1600s, we think of England. But what he's trying to convey in this book is this country is more like the United States of America in the 17 and 1800s, right? Where England was there, you got France, you got some uh, the revolutionaries, the Americans. That's what he's trying to convey. There are these different people that are Imperials or they're they're more like the, the Native Americans and they're all living in this, in this country trying to put their foothold. I'm absolutely all over that, man. As a historian, as a person that just loves history, I, God dang it, I love where Reaver is going. I cannot wait to read issue number three, guys. Let me know. What'd you think of Reaver? There's some action in here. Definitely a lot of uh, uh, a lot of great dialogue. The artwork is, is pretty good. It's not the best, but it's pretty good. Gets the message across, guys. Reaver is awesome. All right, I got two more books for you. This book would have been my indie read of the week if it wasn't for the last book. But this book right here was great. And I didn't know anything about it until the day before on Buyer Pass. And it is from Mad Cave Studios. Shows end number one, and I hope somebody from Mad Cave is watching this, man, because guys, this is an awesome book. Let me tell you something. I love the whole 
freak show circus aspect of this book. It's set in the 1920s, Georgia 1920s. There's these, you know, there's a, a, a circus that is set up in this little town and this girl, Lorelai, she kind of ends up with the circus, right? She she steals from this farmer, she runs into the circus, that farmer chases her in there. He's starting to shoot around saying, you know, you circus freaks, I told you to leave my plants alone and get the hell out of here. So Lorelai, I think that, I really think that's how you say it. It's either Lorelai or Lorelai. She ends up like kind of stowed away on the circus. They get to the next town. You know, they find out that she's there. One of the like the magician women that can foresee things. She's like, yeah, there's a darkness in her. You know, she's going to be special to the circus because the, the, the ringleader doesn't want her. He's like, you know, you got to go. You got to go. But the, that woman says, no, there's something about her that's super special. Artwork, you know, artwork three out of five. Again, not the best, but I, I like it, right? I've seen worse. But the story, man, I just absolutely love the whole freak show aspect of this book. There's a twist that you get to see at the end that includes, you know, that that lets you know what Lorelai is. And what is this darkness that she has inside of her? Guys, if you can find Show's End, I would definitely recommend it. Go pick it up. Go read it. I know Wolf Warner, man, on Twitter, I saw him talk about how he really enjoyed this book. And if it wasn't for the next one, this definitely would have been the read of the week. Um, I know there weren't a lot of them sold. My shop actually only had two on the shelf. I picked up one of them. And I, pro I probably should have picked up two, man, to send and it a-okayed it to somebody. Guys, Show's End, that's a fabulous book. But it's the next book that's my read of the week. So this goes without saying, right? This should be no surprise that this was my read of the week. DC, Marvel, Independence. This is from Boom Studios, guys, and it is Once in Future, number one. It is written by Karen Gillan, who, if you've been reading Die, you'll know that name. She's been writing Die. Once in Future, this cover, number one, is just amazing. So, what is this about? It's set in the present time, and you get this man in England uh, in London, I believe, it might have been some other town. He has found the scabbard of King Arthur, right? And you see the scabbard kind of down here. So what's so special about this scabbard? Well, this scabbard was what held the Excalibur. And it can heal wounds, right? The scabbard can heal wounds. And there are a group of individuals, kind of like a cult, that are out there trying to gather these pieces to resurrect King Arthur and you get this man and his grandmother who are in this story the grandmother calls the the grandson oh you you got to come you got to help me out blah 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 blah. Um, she's run away from like the home that he had her in and turns out she's like a vampire slayer King Arthur and the, the round table craziness man with her artwork inside dude four and a half out of five beautiful artwork you get some action in here there's a lot of mystery, a lot of thriller stuff, a lot of thrills. I believe that this used to, this was a book and this is the aftermath of the book. I could be wrong or it could be the prelude. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I don't know how many issues this is going to run. I know it was kind of a tough find for some people. My local comic shop, I got mine at cover price. Just I've been shopping there forever. I'm really good friends with the owner. But they actually had this book at double cover already because I think it was a $3.99 book. And they had it on their variant shelf for $10, man. Uh, they still had the one per store variant, which I was this close to buying it. But they had it at 70 bucks, which looking on eBay, that was probably a good price. It's a beautiful cover. I'm going to put it right here. But I think this cover is fantastic. And getting it, you know, if I send books to get graded, this actually might be one of the books that I get graded because it is just a fantastic cover. I love the whole, the sword, having that... Whoever this masked man is, which is probably going to be King Arthur back there holding the sword. Absolutely fantastic, guys. Once and future, this is the read of the week for Edwin the Comic Jabroni. If you can go out there and you can find yourself a copy, guys, pick it up. Definitely worth buying, guys. All right, that's all I got for indies. I hope you guys enjoyed this split. I think I'm going to start doing this from now on. DC and Marvel, I'm going to drop that video on Thursdays. And my independence, I'm going to drop that on Fridays. Just gives me more of a chance to talk about the books in depth just a little bit more if I split the videos. Guys, let me know what you think. If not, I can combine them back together for you and make just a little bit longer of a video, maybe like 25 minutes. 
So, again, thanks for watching, guys. Edwin the Comic Jabroni. Remember to like, comment, subscribe if this is your first time watching. And until next week, take it easy. Peace.